This video is sponsored by Ren. Hey, Backyard Scientist here. How's it going? That's great. I'm doing horrible, thanks for asking. See, for the past month, I've been working on this, an elephant's toothpaste water gun. And you all know the elephant's toothpaste experiment. You mix together two chemicals and they explode into foam. So I thought, how cool would it be to have a water gun, but it shoots out a constant stream of foam instead. So this is what it's doing right now. And this is what I want it to do. The problem is you can't mix the chemicals together in the backpack because the reaction makes a lot of foam and the backpack could explode. So I tried to make this nozzle to mix the chemicals in the air, but the elephant's toothpaste is just too slow of a reaction. By the time the chemicals react, the stream of water will have already hit the ground. There is one solution to this problem, and it is Mark Rober's secret devil's toothpaste formula. He refuses to give it out to anybody because he says it's too dangerous. Mark's featured devil's toothpaste in two of his videos before, and just look at how much faster it reacts than normal elephant's toothpaste. This is normal elephant's toothpaste, and this is devil's toothpaste. It reacts insanely fast, and I don't give out the formula because it's super dangerous. Well, Mr. Mark Rober, you may think you're smart, but you're not smart enough to hide your secret formula from me. See, Mark didn't tell us the secret recipe, but he left some clues in the videos. Little science nuggets, if you will. Clue number one, the chemical that he adds to his normal elephant's toothpaste is called... Potassium iodide. Potassium iodide. And it looks the same as the chemical he adds to the devil's toothpaste. At first, I didn't believe he was using potassium iodide because it's a white crystal, and he was using a yellow liquid. So I did some tests. I found out that potassium iodide does actually turn yellow if you leave it in air. It reacts with the oxygen in the air to create iodine in the liquid, which is that orange color. It's already been established that Mark Rober is a trickster. You see, the first video on his channel was making Halloween costumes for trick or treaters. Hello? So this could all be an elaborate ruse. He could have just added another chemical to make it look like it's the same chemical as the elephant's toothpaste. But here's why I think it's the same chemical. When you add iodide to peroxide, you you get an orange color from the iodine being formed. And when Mark showed us Science Bob testing Devil's Toothpaste, you could see the same orange color. Clue number two, the flaming glove. As a demo for how dangerous Devil's Toothpaste supposedly is, he pours a yellow liquid onto a glove which bursts into flames. Now is this the same yellow liquid that he used in the video? I don't think so. See, I've worked with Mark Rober before, and assuming that these two yellow liquids are the same chemical, he would never let anybody so close to something so dangerous. Plus, the way that the fire starts on the bottom of the glove and the smoke comes from the inside of the glove even though he poured the liquid on top of the glove, something doesn't add up. I tried this myself, but I got no reaction with potassium iodide. This is clearly another trick from Mark Rober, but why is he planting all of these seeds of deception and misinformation? I'll tell you why. 153 million views. Two of his elephant's toothpaste videos got 153 million views. It is in Mark's best interest to keep this secret formula for himself. But guess what, Mark? I want some of those views. Too. Clue number three, the flaming bucket. <laughs> Pretty cool, but there's one problem. Elephant's toothpaste isn't flammable, but is devil's toothpaste flammable or did he add something to the mix? The breakdown of hydrogen peroxide creates oxygen gas, but that doesn't burn on its own, so he must have added a fuel like alcohol. See, I noticed the fire was intentional because I saw a pair of wires running to the bucket. So somebody must have been making the wires spark to explode the mixture. To see if this was possible, I tried it myself by adding alcohol to the elephant's toothpaste formula, and my results were the same as Mark's. So what does that tell us? Maybe he just thought this was cool, or maybe it's another distraction. Clue number four. In this clip where he mentions Devil's Toothpaste, he's using the same hydrogen peroxide that I'm using. It's 30% from the pool store, but I cannot get it to react like he did. So my guess is he's actually using a much higher concentration because in this clip you can see it reacting with the dirt on the ground, and in this one you can see it reacting with the rim of the barrel. But here's the thing, high strength hydrogen peroxide is really dangerous, like really dangerous. Let me show you how reactive just 30% is. It reacts with wood. It reacts with rocks. It reacts with dog poop. It also reacts with meat. Guess what else is made of meat? You are made of meat. You've gotta be really careful even with 30% hydrogen peroxide. So yeah, it's dangerous or whatever, but the real problem is it's hard to get. This stuff is basically rocket fuel. You'd have to be an engineer at NASA or something. Wait a minute. Mark Rover started his channel on October 20th, 2011. When he started his channel, Mars was 1.65 astronomical units away from the Earth. Stay with me now. 1.65 astronaut units? That's 153 million miles and 153 million views? Coincidence? I don't know, Mark Rover. You tell me. Or should I say, Mars Rover? But what does it all mean? 
find out after a message from today's sponsor. Special thanks to today's sponsor, REN. REN is a website where you can calculate your carbon footprint and offset it by funding projects that protect rainforests and plant trees that suck carbon out of the air. And it's a very easy way to start doing something about the climate crisis in only a few minutes. REN has a calculator that you can use to calculate your carbon footprint. To get started, you answer a few questions about where you live, what kind of car you drive, how often you travel by plane, which had way more of an impact than I thought it would. And it calculates all of this so you can see what your carbon footprint is and what you can do to reduce it. Mine was honestly way higher than I imagined. Try the calculator for yourself and then put your results down in the comments. We'll see who wins by having the best footprint, not the worst. Now, nobody can really reduce their carbon footprint down to zero by themselves. So REN gives you an option to contribute monthly to projects that help offset your carbon footprint. These contributions support projects like tree planting, rainforest protection, and turning dead trees into biochar, all of which help the environment. Monthly updates show you exactly how your money is being spent so you can see the trees you planted and how your contribution is being used to help end the climate crisis. I've partnered with REN to plant 10 extra trees for the first 100 people that sign up using the link in the description below. I honestly think that this is a really cool project, so join me in supporting it by clicking the link below to learn more about it and get started offsetting your carbon footprint today. After reviewing all of those clues, I have come to the deduction that I'm screwed because I can't buy concentrated hydrogen peroxide like that, not unless I wanna buy a barrel full for $600. So if I want concentrated peroxide, I'm gonna to have to concentrate it myself. So if you guys have been wondering where I've been for the past month, it's been concentrating hydrogen peroxide by evaporating it. Now I'm left with a half gallon of twice as concentrated hydrogen peroxide. And if you look in there, you can see some, some bugs some really dead bugs in there, but you can also see those bubbles. So some does decompose while you evaporate it, so it's not gonna be exactly double strength, but it should still be way more reactive than the regular elephant's toothpaste reaction, so let's go try it. The concentrated peroxide definitely reacts a lot faster. Wow. It's no devil's toothpaste, but it's definitely an improvement. Now, in addition to concentrating the peroxide, I came up with another way to boost our performance, and it's this reaction chamber. I made it out of an old water bottle, and how it works is it screws on to the end of the nozzle. And inside of here, there's a tube that shoots the mixture on the walls of the reaction chamber. So the hydrogen peroxide will mix with the catalyst, turn into foam, and then shoot out under its own pressure. So this is where the chemicals come out of. This little device here mixes them, and like I said before, this is where the foam's gonna expand. And this should even work with 30%, so let's try that first. I'm still kind of scared that this whole thing could explode, so I don't want to wear it on my back yet. Okay, first is the catalyst. I think I should really label these tanks. And now the peroxide, green and red. It's gonna mix to poop brown. At first I was having problems with the foam sputtering instead of uh, foaming, but then I drilled out the nozzle and I got better results. All right, now let's see how it works. Hey! That worked way better with the reaction chamber on it than it did before, but I think if we get 60% peroxide, it'll be even better. Now it's time to fill up the tanks with the high strength hydrogen peroxide. Also, this is expensive. This is like 20 bucks a shot. You know, I'm using like 150 grams of potassium iodide each shot, 500 grams cost 100 bucks. So yeah, I mean, I'm basically using 20 bucks a shot. I'm still scared to wear this thing on my back. Like it's full of hydrogen peroxide. What if it explodes? Or what if the hoses leak all over me? They're full of hydrogen peroxide. It's just, this is one of those things that sounds easy and then you get to do it and you're like, oh my God, there's like five different ways this could kill me. And it could be an environmental disaster depending on what catalyst I use. It's, you know, let's try it. Okay, just a tiny little bump at first. It's getting hot. What? Wow. Okay. It looks like it's working. I mean, it's not working, but it's making a lot of thrust. Feel, oh my God, it's so hot. It's like 200 degrees. I'm not even kidding. Should I get the thermal camera so you can see how hot it is? Yeah. I didn't know it at the time, but this was a ticking time bomb. The peroxide was reacting with the brass fittings or something else, and less than 30 seconds later after I walked away, the tank ruptures. Oh my God, did you, do you? That's what the bang was. The gun exploded, I was just talking about that. I was just saying that this could happen and it happened. You know what, Mark warned me about this. He said it was dangerous, but I didn't listen. But I am not giving up. I made a new tank for this and I'm going back down to a safer concentration of 30% peroxide. I am making a handheld squirt gun if it kills me. Here we go, three, two, one.
Whoa, look at it go! This is so good! Do you think that worked? I didn't have high hopes. It didn't work great. I mean, it worked, but it, you know, I'm happy with it. Done. Happy to be done with it, exactly. I still can't believe that this happened. I'm super lucky that I wasn't anywhere near this when it exploded. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. See you next time.